God of heaven. Most of the time we hold explosives as if we are holding paper. No one knows what is in it. That is what prayer is in the hand of many people. Is your advancer and yet you don't know it. Innate is your lifting, yet you don't know it. Innate is my change of level, yet I don't know it. What's that in your hand? A rod? And what about? Okay, drop it first. He fled. He said, now hold it by the tail. <laughs> and then turn back to a rod. He never sends us to do what he has not equipped us to do. All we need is to recognize what is in this equipment and engage it. In the name of Jesus, no one will ever be at the same spot again. Yeah. As the Lord liveth, every step from now shall be forward. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please... You may be comfortably seated. This is a church growth workshop, and what we're trying to do is to put together the tools for continuous and unending church growth. Prayer for church growth is a lifelong task for any congregation. So the earlier we develop ourselves to enjoy it, the better. It's a lifelong task for any congregation that desires continuous growth. It takes prayers to see a church growth grow and it takes prayer to sustain the growth of any church. And there is no software for it. No technology can pray that God will answer. He that asketh, receive it. He that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh the door shall be opened. There is no software for prayers. There is no new technology for prayers. There is no new generation prayer style. Every prayer requires a human person with his voice sounding to heaven and in faith. Where prayer stops is where growth stops. Where prayer stops is where growth stops. It's not something for a season, it is for a lifetime. There is no stopping a praying church from growing. A praying church will always be a growing church. And the church won't stop growing until she stops praying. So fasten your seatbelt. No shortcut. Fasten your seatbelt. There is no shortcut. Someone shared a testimony. He schooled at Rema. And he had me speaking on 
the mystery of eternal life, and I was quoting Hagen profusely. It's an American and I mean, living in uh, New York. The spirit, of the, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. He hit the street and start a strong prayer walk that lasted hours in the midst of uh, winter. Saying, I stayed there for two years, but I never had this thing that the man is talking about. He came down here to Nigeria to do Bible school. You can't be sitting down and hear nothing. Or do nothing about whatever you claim to hear. And just remain at the same point roaming about. All my time with Egan put together will not be two hours. Two hours in his life. But I carry his man to visibly today. Clearly leading the word of faith, the word of unadulterated word of faith on the earth today. It's one thing to be in a place, it's another to be a partaker of what that place offers. It's one thing to be in a meeting, it's another thing for the meeting to get across to you. As Israel began to grow in Egypt, Pharaoh and the gods of Egypt became restless. They just became restless. They began to toughen life for the people. But the more they persecuted them, the more they grew and excelled. And that's the plan of the church. And it's a picture that the growth of the church will always anger the devil. And so you have to keep his hands off from the prayer altar again and again. It's more demanding to manage success than to deal with failure. Managing success you have to be watchful all around to find out where the enemy is trying to come in and block his way. You are out for success is one goal. Just get it. I will yet be inquired of this by the house of Israel to do it for them, and I will increase them with men like a flock. Ezekiel 36 and verse 37. No one has capacity to grow the church because every church advances and grows against the gang ups of hell. The gangs of, of the gates of hell. So, we must engage the powers from above for the church to keep growing. A prayerful church is a powerful church. And it takes power to rule in the midst of our enemies. So for a church to keep prevailing against all oppositions, it must be a praying church. Oh Lord my God, my soul thirsted for thee and my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. Psalm 66, verse 1 to 3. You 
can see his power without a thirst of the soul and a longing of the flesh. And when you see his power, your enemies will submit to you. He said, Oh Lord God, thou through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. So it's not just praying to make things happen. It's praying to keep things happening. Praying to keep things happening. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the spirit of prayer and intercession come down upon every one of us afresh this afternoon. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Come down upon every one of us this afternoon. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Father. It's a lifelong stuff, and so we have to keep the fire burning in Jesus' name. Our praying church is a powerful church and a powerful church is a reigning church. In Psalm 66 and verse 7, he said, He ruled, Psalm 63 and verse 7, He ruled by His power forever. For how long? So we rule by power. Power when someone is empowered, when ruling this is in power. This is what he ruled by his power forever. Forever, something must break forth in your life today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, so it's a lifelong thing. We must therefore develop a platform that keeps people praying and praying all right. You have, you ask and have not because you ask amiss. Praying aright. You know God is no respect of persons and is no break of covenant. You don't do it right, you don't get it. You have to do it right. Therefore for the church, the any church that must keep growing must keep praying. We'll give ourselves continually to prayers that will make the ministry of the word effectual. We give, I mean, Acts chapter 6 verse 4, we will give ourselves continually, continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So it's an unending task. And so we saw them praying, and we saw the church erupting. They were praying daily from house to house, and in the temple, as um, chapter 2 and verse 46 and 47, they went out in the hour of prayer. They were together again praying in Acts chapter 4, and the church just kept exploding as they kept praying. We never find a growing church that is not a praying church. I think what I want us to take from this workshop is the place of prayer in keeping the church growing. We just must get it. I know most of the churches now do it. We have a prayer and fasting day every week in this church. And three days of prayer and fasting every month. And that has been, eh? at the beginning of the month, that has been on for as long. There is no week here, whether it's Christmas or New Year, <laughs> that you don't fast in a week. <laughs> if we stop doing it now, you will see the church going down. God is not a respect of persons. Have I found a week in my life in 37 years I was not in a fast? Now, whether planned or not planned, there are just days you can't eat. <laughs> and you are not under pressure. So it's one thing to work hard. It's another thing to work stressed. Amen. 
I don't work stress. I don't have no stress. I'm no way nobody. I'm not running away from nobody. When you walk stressed, you are pressed. Your blood pressure goes up. There's a disorder in the system. But when you just simply work hard on your assignment, work in the right work, you are just going from strength to strength. Now, this is the task. You want to have an evergreen church, then raise an ever-burning prayer altar. Raise an ever-burning prayer altar. There is something we experience in our church. We hardly see people come for counseling. They already know how to counsel themselves. <laughs> they pray. They go for outreach. They do the will of God. They search scriptures. They read books. And so, if you see another person who says his job is counseling, he's not doing any job. <laughs> He's not doing any job. I mean, as small as each church is, you don't have 10 people come for counseling. Yes, they come for welfare when they are challenged. But when it's counseling on what to do, they already know what to do. They hear what to do every day. <laughs> they hear what to do every day. There are people who have laid hands upon about 10 times. Nothing has changed. <laughs> there are those who are sharing humbling testimonies that have never seen you in their life. By doing what they are instructed to do. Amen. The church today, by revelation, is a do-it-yourself church. What is it? If you want to prosper, do it yourself. This is what to do, if you're interested. You want a growing church, this is what to do to grow the church. It's not to go and be speaking grammar all over town. <laughs> this is what to do to grow a church. Everything about ministry is work. So they call it the work of the ministry. What do they call it? Is it the play of the ministry? <laughs> it's the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry. Any church that is just a preaching church can never experience supernatural growth. Because it takes the power of the Holy Ghost for people who are preaching to understand it. It takes prayer to remove the blindfolding weapon on their eyes. You remember one lawyer in our church in Kaduna? <coughs> a senior lawyer, very respected one. Son, was a son when uh, there were not many sons in Nigeria. One day, I taught on uh, tithing. He came with excitement. Hey, I just understand for the first time today in my life. <laughs> he came with excitement. I mean, he was in Ghana when he his group. That's the first day he understood. And he has been in that church said today. He takes note every day. But that day was the day he understood it. Amen. There are many people are here and you they don't understand what you are saying. They're on the front row. <laughs> <laughs> they arrive in church before you. But they don't understand one thing. You say. <laughs> After you have finished praying, that he took your family and said, please pray for me, I'm sick. <laughs> He didn't understand one thing you have said since that meeting. <laughs> Amen. So we need to pray that the eyes of understanding of the people be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of their calling and how much riches they have in Christ, that their eyes be open. So if you are just uh, preaching, you are just entertaining them. In fact, before you finish saying they have clapped, to show that they are not following you. <laughs> you have not landed. Clapping as overshadow even what you said before. They are not following you. You are just entertaining them. Ah, this man can speak. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get one thing you are saying. You see on congregation while the time you are preaching, they stand up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he has no note. He has no heart. He just enjoy the the weight of the grammar as it's coming. <laughs> and at the end of all that exam, he doesn't know what to do next. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do next. This is so important.
any church that is just a preaching church will be limited in growth. The growth may be stored at any, at any time. This is why we must continue to engage the prayer altar to experience continuous church growth. No shortcut. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. You don't transfer pregnancy that you deliver one now and then the other part of pregnancy will deliver later. <laughs> Every child birth has to be consciously conceived and delivered. Every increase in church I mean, has to be conceived and delivered in the labor room of prayer. Amen. They say, Paphras was laboring fervently in prayers. Paul said, I travail again until Christ be formed in thee. Galatians 4.19 and Colossians 4.12. When the church stop praying, the church will stop growing. Everything about church growth draws strength from prayers. Revelation draws empath from prayers. Open my eyes that there may be who wonders in that thy Lord. They all draw strength. Pray that the word of God may have a free course in our mouth. They all draw strength. That I may speak as I ought to. The mysteries of the kingdom. They all draw strength. Ephesians 6 verse 19. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 1. I mean everything. The word is crucial in church growth. For wherever the carcass is, the ego shall be gathered together. But we enforce the release of the word on the altar of prayer. A prayer congregation will enjoy free flow of revelation from the altar. But there are many cries that have no substance. People are crying without making any statement. When statements are made, they are not defined. You can't put your finger on it. And so you find prayer becomes a frustration because people don't have a working knowledge of what to pray. He said, we do not know what to pray as we ought to, not how to pray, what to pray. What do we pray to see a church growing? This is so important. And I promise yesterday I'm going to show you some of our prayer bulletins that is in the hand of every member of the church so they can engage productively, effectually in their kingdom advancement prayer life. We call it kingdom advancement prayer here because Jesus said, when you pray, say our Father, we are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And the first thing is what? Thy kingdom come. Talking about the growth, the expansion, the enlargement of the church of God, which includes continuous and explosive church growth. And seek ye for the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added to you. So the people are trained to know, look, this is a jackpot for you. When you commit to praying in kingdom advance and prayer, you have committed God to all other needs of your life. They are added to you for free. And we begin to harvest testimonies again and again. Now, we need to educate the people, not bamboozle them. We need to help them to know what to do. And then believe God for them to commit to it. We did something here we called, why must we continue to pray for church growth? So how, how long are we going to do this? So they have an idea of why we have to continue. The battle is ranging. The battle is on. 
And so our engagement must remain. Praise God. Now, we did the intercessory prayer guidelines for the release of life transforming word in our services. Praying for the release of life transforming word in our services. So people know what to pray. When it's Saturday, everybody engages with it. Now tomorrow your people will be gathered. Now send us your word. The right word. The word in season. The sent word that he is and delivers. Now I think there are about uh, 30 prayer lines here. About 30 prayer lines on this. And each prayer item carries a scripture to help drive it. Each prayer line carries scriptures to help drive it. You see, <laughs> don't be slothful. So when we print, we print 400,000 copies here. And all of the churches print the number of people that God has given us. And, uh, they need it. Otherwise, they will, <laughs> It's not five minutes yet. <laughs> he doesn't know what to say. There are many times you are speaking in tongues, you are just more money. You are saying, God, I don't know why they say I should be praying, but I'm here. <laughs> now, this is intercessory prayer guidelines for church members. To have their needs met. Line by line. 40 prayer items. So you have what to do. You know what to do. You are not looking for scriptures again. You already have it. You may read it now in your Bible. But this shows you exactly. The will of God concerning that prayer item. And helps you to drive it. And then. Now you see. Some people name the year. But don't know what to do with it. They just name it. It becomes a song and a slang. But this is intercessory prayer guidelines for New Dawn 2018. So you know what it is. It has been declared prophetically. Now you have to drive it. It's prophetic. You have to drive it. Amen. This charge I commit to you, my son, Timothy, according to the prophecy which went before thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Forty prayer lines. Now there, thank you for last year's uh, prophetic word. How it came raw to pass in the life of many, including my life. Now, guidelines for fruitful outreaches. You don't just go out and then be telling people, they just say, we don't want to hear. <laughs> you secure the audience of every contact by these prayer lines. Holy Ghost, go before everyone reaching out to you today. Compel audience of every combat. Now, convict by your word and convert. Stop there. Drive them to church to establish them in the faith. Now that goes on. 35 prayer lines. Now, new converse retention intercessory prayer lines. You know, you got like my son was saying in the morning, you have 10,000 people and only 1,000 stay. That's a good figure for many churches. No? <laughs> you don't have five. You don't have five. They are just collecting the fish and throwing them back to the water. To go and refish. <laughs> Retention. My children, for whom I travel in bath again until Christ be formed in you. Lord, shut the back door against everyone that steps here. Let everyone that steps in stay on. Let no devil pluck anyone out of your hand. Retention prayers. And then uh, the Baba of them, Supernatural Church Growth Prayer Guidelines. I think there are 50 here to show his Baba of all of them. That Satan, take your, take your hand off now in the name of Jesus. Now! I will build my church. This is his church. You can't stand this way. Oh, ye gates, lift up your hands. Lift up your everlasting doors. 
I mean, you run through these prayers. You are just transformed. Your eyes have turned. You come out of the prayer, they almost... Normal human beings, we almost fall down. Because you are praying the will of God. Can I hear your amen? amen? That's the way it works. And then, of course, we have um, vengeance prayers. There are, there are just words that we not hear your until vengeance answers on their head. So, you invoke vengeance or all church growth resisting forces. We did this because it's not, that, it's not a serious matter. When you say it in faith, the devil flees. 24 prayer lines. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, says the Lord, and the year of my redeemed is come. So we invoke vengeance on all church growth resistant forces. All evil beasts that may be in the camp. Who after you have preached, they say, well, this is my fifth year here. She was she said, Dini, you have just come. Don't waste your time. <laughs> He's in the church. He's an evil beast that scatters the flock. So you invoke vengeance to silence them. You break their backbone. <laughs> so that leg they used to stand in manipulating people, <laughs> they don't have it again. Praise God. And then this keeps your spirit man alive. Personal, spiritual, awakening, intercessory prayer guideline. This is where you deal with all forces of defilement. This is where you pray your life to come on the frequency of, a, of the revival going on. Personal. So you can triumph on the earth and enjoy heaven in endless eternity. It's a cleansing prayer bulletin. It keeps you consecrated unto God. It's 40 only. You pray this in the morning. You try off over sin all day. Nerushkana barada salota. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. You know anyone you name it? How to again, Jesus? Cover me against all forces of defilement. And you put yourself just online for God's transforming grace on your life. So you can have a struggle free prayer line by having in your hand already tested, proven, edited prayer lines. Amen. You you open the scripture and it, ooh, fire comes in. Everybody must pray. Oh, yes. What must we pray? We don't know. And the pastor said, I don't know to just pray. Just pray. What are you to pray? Oh, God! Oh, God of Abraham, I see. Can you? <laughs> Amen. You know, when I hear, I heard that, okay, when, this is the comment that we have in him that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. I've been writing prayer down since about 1977. I don't go for any outing to pray as the Lord leads. I, he leads me before I go home. <laughs> <laughs> so I can pray meaningful prayers. This is the way it works. When the matter looks tough, I sit down to communicate with God in writing. This is what is happening. But according to your word, it does not have to be based on this and this and this and this. Oh Lord, show yourself and confirm your word on this subject. You are before the judge of all the earth. That's what you are doing in intercession. Glory to God. Please get back home and walk. What did I say? Get back home and walk. And I tell you, this prayer is not attached to a church. It's for the church. 
It's for what? For anyone that is interested. There are those who are not interested. They say, we are just here to collect offering and live our life. So what is the problem? <laughs> Can't kill myself for anything. <laughs> you look at it, I will be in my church. It's not saying to a denomination, it's saying to everybody. To every church. So connect. And engage. So you are free to copy this in and put the name of the church there. <laughs> that is not a, there is no copyright in it. If it's the prayer, they are praying and God is answering. No, we are also praying it here. For what you say to one, you say to all. <laughs> Can I hear your amen? <laughs> there is no confidentiality in prayer. No. If you want the kind of thing they say they are praying for, and they know the word of God that says so, you start praying it. And you don't have to tell the church that you copy because it's from the Lord. <laughs> it applies to everybody. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. He said others have labored and we have entered into their labor. And it's allowed. <laughs> Can I hear your amen? Because some people can now be planning how to write this prayer for the next three months. The whole project for the year is gone. And then he's reading it and reading it. And now he's writing it and it must be different from this. Are you following? <laughs> so at the end of the day, he's praying confusion. <laughs> now you have never tried it. You are not going to write 40 prayer outlines. It will take you weeks. <laughs> Just collect it. Where they put uh, altar? Put your town. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if they put fair tabernacle, put one tabernacle. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. There is no copyright law that binds you. If you look at all those prayer lines, there is no copyright number. <laughs> it's everybody's item whosoever is interested. So get ahead and pray. Hit the ground running. Anytime you don't dive when the water moves, you have lost it. Now, if you don't do anything about outreach, this coming week, the week that follows, you will need to wait for the next conference. Because you can't move anymore. <laughs> the force that will move you has left. <laughs> when Jesus said to that man, go to the pool called Siloam and wash. And he said, okay, I'm going somewhere first. Next week I'll go there. <laughs> Next week you are going to swim. <laughs> You'll be blinder than you went. Because the power that will open your eyes has left. Also the force steps in. I mean, you, you think all pastors are praying for church growth? No. Some have never prayed for either church growth or their member. You just pray for the latest message. They hear it. Oh, yes. Shout ye. So tomorrow I'll tell them, shout ye. <laughs> In case that's where the power is. Okay. Praise God. Everything about church growth applies to every congregation that is interested. Every. You won't miss your portion. Now, let's close with this. Prayer does not only change things. Prayer changes people. Every praying believer experiences continuous change of level according to scriptures. Prayer does not only change things, prayer changes people. For as we behold them as in a glass, we are changed. That's talking about his presence. And in prayers, we just come up To the throne of grace. To behold his face. Let us.
must therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy from his presence and find grace to help in the time of need. So in prayers, we are engaging his presence. And they go from strength to strength. Psalm 84 verse 7. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. Now I came down from a time in God's presence. Um, 1981. And I was ministering to a family. Now, on the coach of their own house. I don't know how people fall from the coach, not on the chair like this. Just boom. And a 14 year old bandage was loosed. Just come in. You change level. You, you are changed. You are changed. You are just changed. Prayer does not only change things. Prayer changes people. The altar of prayer is the altar of transformation or transfiguration. As, and as he prayed, John, I mean, Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his garment or raiment was white and glistening. And there appeared to him from heaven three men. Amen. And there came a voice from heaven. This is my beloved son. Hear him. His level of authority has changed. He was well pleased with him in chapter 3. Now hear him in chapter 9. And in verse 43, the people saw the mighty power of God has changed from power to mighty power. He returned in the power of the Spirit in chapter 4, verse 14. Now they saw the mighty power of God in his life. In verse 49, 43 of that chapter 9. Prayer does not only change things, prayer changes people. You want to sustain impact? You must sustain a prayer life. An effectual prayer life to sustain impact in ministry. You wake up in the morning. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. What to say you will do. That is what you will do. That is why you are called Jehovah. E moloro da shi ale barakota ne malo sasusa. E yubala rosa ne kano samo baba bala. Yen kleru ale shale baroda na na na. That is why you are called Jehovah. You're just driving into His presence. That is why you are called Jehovah. What to say you will do. That is what you will do. That is why you are called Jehovah. A number of us sleep at 3 o'clock in the morning. We are out at 5 in the morning for Sunday service. What you say you will do today, that is what you will do. That is why you are called Jehovah. No crisis. Movement in and out, no crisis. The word flows unhindered. Flows unhindered today. Hear the prayers of the saints. And let there be penetrative revelations. Changing lives. You can never. We can never sustain impact. Without a dynamic prayer life. You get to a point where you pray. Without ceasing. Lift up, lifting up holy hands everywhere. <laughs> I traveled from town down here, from our old church facility, with a um, great man of God, Dr. Mike Murdoch, and we were having some discussion on the way. And then at every point, you hear me say, Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. 
Jesus, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> he started counting. He has all kinds of equipment. He said, you have said, praise the Lord, hallelujah, 72 times. I wasn't sure whether you are following the discussion or not. I'm not sure too whether I was following. <laughs> Amen. So it's impossible to sustain impact which includes it's important to sustain church growth without a prayer life. I'm not praying yet as I ought to. I mean, I need help. I need help. My so help me, Jesus. Somebody else need help, you can call for it. Help me, Jesus. As our prayer life continues to grow to match our task, there will all be work over task. What do I call it? Work over task. We are not struggling with them. Prayer changes people. Abraham, the great intercessor, We saw him stood in the gap for Sodom and Gomorrah. It has become his natural estate. You see the communication shows that he's not a man who just started in prayer. Lord, if you see 50 people in the town, who must they destroy? Shall the judge of all the earth not do right? Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked because there are only 50? And God said, Abraham, you have come again. If I find 50, I will spare Oh God, if they are less than 10 and they are now 40, are they now not right up because they are 40? For the sake of 40. Now, God make you no vex. But if they are only 30, would you destroy? He said, for the sake of 30, I will not. And so God saying, I think we should stop by now. He said, God, please, this one time. <laughs> if there are 20, who you still destroy? He was used to it. He said communication he wasn't strained to. May we be used to prayer that way. Yeah. At the age of 114, he tried three days, non-stop, mountaineering, full of energy. He was 175 years old. Transformed on the altar of prayer. Next, for time we saw Moses. At one twenty, his eyes were not dim. Neither his natural force abated. He was out. On a prayer expedition, Exodus 34, verse 27 to 35. And when he returned, they could not look at his face because his face was shown. He was transfigured. He was transfigured before them. Transfigured before them. Prayer does not only change things. Prayer changes people. May we all begin to experience the dramatic changes that Prayer offers praying people in the name of Jesus. Amen. He was transfigured. He had access to unlimited revelation. He was God's number one confidant on the earth. He told him I created, he created the world, the state of the world when he created it. The sequence has not been faulted. But we saw a transformed man, full of spiritual energy, full of mental energy, full of physical energy. He was an old and transformed man. And prayer was a vital secret of his life. Prayer does not only change people, prayer does not only change things, prayer changes people. 
Then we found a man by name Daniel. Mortality has been swallowed up of life. He was praying three times a day. He was a kingdom focused prayer warrior. The lion had no power over his body. His body had been immortalized. Yes. Eternalized. <laughs> Amen. Transfigured. Transformed. Prayer does not only change things. Prayer changes We are three, is three companions, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went through the fiery furnace whose flame killed the people that threw them there. But there was no smell of fire on them. These were prayer warriors, man. <laughs> the air of their head did not sink. Their heart did not burn. Their robe did not burn. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come forth out of the fire. And they came out. Prayer had changed their being. Prayer had transfigured their being. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, change me. Change me, Jesus. Change me on the prayer altar. Change me forever. Change me today. Keep changing me, Jesus. Keep changing me, Jesus. Keep changing me, Jesus. In the days of this bubonic plague in South Africa, there was this man by the name John G. Lake. He would use his hand out of compassion and wipe the foam off the mouth of the victim. And anybody that contacted the foam caught the disease. And so they wonder why is this man not affected or infected. So they checked the foam from his hand and the germs were dead. The germs were physically dead. Not everybody walking on the earth is a mortal man. There are highly demonized people that look like human beings. They are human beings. But they are Satan personified. There are others who are highly divinized. They are highly divinized. What torments others cannot torment them. People started washing hands and all that stuff. I lay hands on someone with Ebola. And I'm here. Please understand, these are, these are spiritual matters. Spiritual matters. Okay, the one who first got a bala, who later, who, who did he touch? He didn't touch anybody. The demon just came. <laughs> and look, and took hold of him. pray. It does not only grow the church, it grows you. Changes your level. Moves to another level. Don't mistake your calling for a special place. It's purely an assignment. But your person needs attention. My person needs attention. Your person needs attention. And my person needs attention. Let's engage the prayer altar for continuous change of level of our persons. Paul said, in everything by prayers. That was his motto. In everything by prayer, pray without ceasing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and fasting. By prayer, and supplication makes your request known to God. He said in fastings often. He demonstrated power over death severally. It was one night in the deep. One night. Lost inside water. He's not a diver. And he came out. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 25. What 
what to choose, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, uh, whether to go or to remain, but uh, the way you are looking, I choose to remain. I'll be here. Philippians 1, 21 to 25. He had mastery over death, sir. Paul had mastery over death. He spread his life into the realm of immortality. There is no natural man that will be lost in the water overnight and come out. And they didn't take him to the hospital. He just imagined the next meeting. I just left with the waves now. And we had a nice time there, man. Amen. He was just on top of it. That's how prayer changes people. I pray always for you. I travail for you to be born. I travail for you to be established in the faith. He, he was a prayer giant. He had mercy over death. Had mercy over sickness and disease. Had mercy over devils. They said about him, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of man. Man, he was, he was an immortalized personality. Rise to your feet. Amen. Let's give Jesus a big, big hand, everybody. Have you been touched this afternoon? Come and give Jesus the biggest clap offering. You are not giving that offering to a man. You are giving it to Jesus, who has shown you now which way to go and has put the key of transformation on any transformation in your life, on ending church growth key in your hand. Come and celebrate Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, would you lift up your two hands and tap into grace to walk in the light that you have seen? Lift up your two hands to heaven and pray. Appropriating new realms, new levels of prayer life. Lord, change my prayer life. Move my prayer life forward. Now take it, take it, take it, take it. A new prayer grace on your life. Moving the walk in your hand forward. And moving your life forward as an individual. Somebody's praying. You don't encounter the power of God without a task and a longing. Now pray. Now pray. Now pray. Radeke le crodia le shagala barado sa. Ecolotoria le brada galata zuzenota. Mela la 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 la. Lord, empower my prayer life to another level. Empower my prayer life to another level. Empower my prayer life to another level. Empower the prayer life of every member of my congregation, of your congregation to another level. Lord, empower the prayer life of your congregation under my care to the next level. Jesus, do it today. Arebagalo, regula baga, garoketeno, esirabalo, ekrakatano, zezia leta, baroka de kato, embrabalata, etute neproda, yekiaro tase, aproke ne kotane.
In Jesus' precious name we are praying. In case you don't have a fasting day instituted and you are interested, go and institute one. Now, not go and introduce five days of fasting and prayer per week. <laughs> you, fall, you, you may be the first one to break it. You have not done one yet, so what are you doing to fall? Just go ahead and say, Lord, we've been waiting on the Lord to keep the hands of the enemy off the affairs of this church. Everybody you hear, they said, I hear. Okay, we start this week. You are not on Sunday. You are just stepping out. There is no outreach. I've never done one since the year began, maybe in the last two years or the last three years or four years. Now put one up. Start with yourself. Praise God. I said, I got this light and I took it up. And I can't believe that I got 20 souls this week. They say, Pastor, 20 souls. Back, 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 back. Would you join me as we serve Jesus? And reaping the overripe harvest of the world for which he died. Before you know it, 10 people have joined. 20 people. If you make it evangelism team, you won't get anything. You are the team leader. Anything that works in nature, you are the team leader. You don't drive any spiritual thing, it won't fly. It won't fly. We have a prayer army. <laughs> and you are not there. The prayer will soon go off. Very surely there will be no argument. Shall we pray for church growth or pray for retention of uh, something? Retention? No. We pray for members. No. <laughs> because no plane will fly without a pilot. And the captain is responsible for it. Now, in the name of Jesus, before the year is over, you are singing a new song. Amen. You are up on a new spiritual pedestal. Yeah. God is doing strange things in that church. Yeah. Strange and positive things. Yeah. Strange and positive things. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. More importantly, God is doing a strange thing in your life. Yeah. You know, the prayers Jesus, the prayer lines that Jesus taught is for daily engagement. Mm. It's for what? Deliver us this day from evil. No, give us this day our daily bread. That already qualifies all other items in that prayer as a daily requirement. You can pray to be delivered from temptation and fall into it. Hello? Just look at those prayer items and engage with them daily instead of reciting them. Engage with them daily. No one will abuse the callings on his life. Yeah. It's regretted God that he made Saul king. God will not regret calling you into ministry. Yeah. God will not regret putting a church under your care. Yeah. God will not regret calling you by your name yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I decree new prayer fire on every congregation yeah. represented. Yeah. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. Yeah. 